Last year, Kit Guru went to Israel with Intel. We've actually been there previously with Intel, but let's put that to one side. Last year was Intel's first tech tour, and they told us all about fabricating silicon wafers and making chips. But that's only part of the story. Once you've made your chips, or dies as Intel prefers to call them, you have to cut up the wafers, singulation, and then you have to package those dies into processors. That process doesn't happen in Israel. Intel has a number of packaging plants around the globe, the longest established being in Malaysia. And Kit Guru has now been on the second of Intel's tech tours, to Penang in Malaysia. There we go, two out of two. The term packaging might be slightly confusing. We are not, in this instance, talking about branded boxes and such like. We are talking about this kind of thing. The package, in this case, an Alder Lake or a Raptor Lake, well, actually, it's a keychain made from an Alder Lake or a Raptor Lake, where the dyes are singulated and then put on a substrate a heat spreader is added, and after a lot of testing, voila, you have a finished processor. And as part of this discussion, you will learn why it is that most people in the Penang facility work under white light, but these people work under yellow light. What is that all about? Intel took a small army of tech press, influencers and analysts to Malaysia for two distinct reasons. The first reason was to brief us on Meteor Lake, Intel's 14th generation laptop chips, which will be announced at Intel Innovation on the 19th of September. It follows that these briefings are under NDA for the next few weeks and therefore I can say nothing about Meteor Lake at this time. Beyond, of course, what we already know, which is that Meteor Lake will be Intel's first client processor that uses EUV in the fabrication process. Furthermore, it has a disaggregated design. In other words, there's a base tile and then a number of other tiles on top, as you can see in this little diagram. We also know that Meteor Lake will use Foveros packaging, as you can see here. And that is the other reason why we're in Malaysia, so we could see what this packaging entailed. So if we first look at Meteor Lake with its handful of tiles, and I can tell you that this representation is not entirely accurate. It is just an indication of some tiles, kind of like Legos on a base tile. And then we compare to Ponda Vecchio, which is an enormous data center GPU with a huge number of tiles. In the next slide, Intel is making a claim, continued leadership in advanced packaging, and they name some technologies. So EMIB is the interconnect, and then we have different types of Foveros, Foveros Technology Basic, Foveros Omni, and Foveros Direct. For the past few years, we've been discussing process technology. For example, Apple tends to get the leading node at TSMC. AMD moved from Global Foundries to TSMC because Global Foundries bailed out on future investment and node shrinks. Intel, meanwhile, was stuck, unable to deliver 10 nanometer for a great many years. Then they renamed it Intel 7 and so on and so forth. That's fabrication technology. Intel wants to change the story and talk about packaging because they say that is where the future of innovation lies. And this is part of the reason why we ended up in Penang to see behind their ordinarily very closed doors. Part of the surprise to me was to learn that Intel opened their first plant in Malaysia back in the early 1970s, more than 50 years ago. Indeed, it was Intel's first plant outside of the USA. Besides technology, Malaysia also has very cute mascots, and that is important. And then we look at what Intel has been doing in Malaysia for all those years. As mentioned, Malaysia was Intel's first offshore site, i.e. outside of the USA, and their first assembly plant. We were told in passing that back in the day, the term clean room which these days means bunny suits and different air pressure, extreme filtration, controlled airflow and all sorts. Back then, clean room meant you sweep the floor before you start packaging processes, which was pretty much hand assembly rather than automated. In 1972, Intel had 100 employees in Malaysia. 
Today, they have 15,000, and the size of the facilities has boomed. It was interesting to see that in addition to packaging processes in Malaysia, Intel also designs certain parts of their products there. They also manufacture test equipment in Malaysia, which is then shipped to Intel plants around the world. And here we see the scope of Intel's global operation. So they have fabrication plants across America, they also have fabs in Ireland and Israel, and they have a planned fab in what used to be East Germany. Then we see packaging plants, New Mexico and Malaysia, and assembly and testing in China, Vietnam, Malaysia and Costa Rica, with a planned plant in Poland. Malaysia is significant here because it does both packaging and also assembly and testing. Malaysia is much more significant to Intel than I would ever have guessed. When we arrived at the first plant we were given a couple of presentations. One of them shows four photos. Look at the bottom left of the four photos and there's a car stuck in mud. We are told the chap in the white shirt is Andy Grove himself. It is also clear if you look at the bottom left and then the top right just how Intel has changed over the intervening years. 50 years of investment in APJ, that's Asia Pacific and Japan, a fair amount of investment in Vietnam, a lot of investment in Malaysia, also you note a lot of investment in India, that's the only time India got to mention what these 14,000 employees are doing in India, don't know. Intel Malaysia's key functions, they've got 12 key functions, that's a lot of key functions, advanced packaging, die prep and sort, assembly and test, board and system integration, product design, product development, validation, customer engagement, technology development, failure analysis, sales and marketing, global services. We saw a fair few of these in operation, albeit they were careful to restrict what we could see, and you will see from some of the Intel provided B-roll for example, that certain images are strategically blurred out. This slide showing the impact of Intel's investment in Malaysia is one of those give and take things. Intel clearly gets a lot from being in Malaysia. They also want to make it crystal clear that Intel is very important to Malaysia. This is a long-term relationship and Intel wants to keep it going just as long as possible. Everyone is intended to be a winner here. Intel's facilities in Malaysia process 1,000 wafers a day, and each wafer will contain potentially hundreds of individual dyes. The first major task is to singulate the wafer into individual dyes, and then the dyes are transferred to tape, because that's how the process machines operate. This is industry standard practice. Singulation is in principle straightforward. You have a wafer that's 300 millimeters in diameter and approximately one millimeter thick. It doesn't weigh a great deal. However, its value is significant and it contains a number of very delicate dyes. How do you singulate this wafer? The answer in principle is quite straightforward. You put it in a holder, put that holder into a machine tool, and then you use a pair of diamond saws. We can see here the process illustrated by SK Hynix one saw working on the x-axis and the other on the y-axis. But when you think a little bit deeper, what's to prevent each of the dies flying around the machine tool as it's sawed free? The answer is that a film of adhesive material is applied to the wafer in its holder before it is sawed up. Then the two saws go to work and now you have a bunch of dies stuck to a plastic film. And how might you release those dies from that plastic film without damaging them? The answer, again, is quite straightforward although fairly sophisticated. The glue on the plastic film is UV sensitive and that is why the light in this particular area is yellow. It has no blue in it. Expose the singulated wafers to UV light, the adhesive is weakened and now the individual dyes can be picked out of the frame and applied to tape. And that's why in this part of the facility the lighting is yellow and everywhere else it is bright white. Now the dyes have been prepared, we're ready to get busy packaging them. In principle this could be relatively straightforward. Think back to the old days of say a Pentium 4, it's a single chip. You have a substrate which is that green piece of fiberglass type material. Apply some solder bumps, apply the chip, heat it up, job done. Add some thermal compound, put a heat spreader on top, few surface mount components, and you have a processor. Clearly this is grotesquely simplified. Here we're looking at Sapphire Rapids, which is considerably more complicated than a Pentium 4, and it involves 3D packaging. 
The significant point here is that Sapphire Rapids is an existing processor and Intel was fairly prepared to show us what was going on. With this B-roll of Meteor Lake, they are much more cagey. You can pretty much just see it's some processors getting assembled. Ponte Vecchio, the data center graphics, also are a current product. We can see lots of chips being assembled on the substrate and joined together with 3D packaging using different types of Foveros. At every stage along the way, the Intel people are testing and retesting first the dies and then the processors. You might think it's a complete pain when Intel changes their desktop platform from LGA 1200 and DDR4 to LGA 1700 and DDR5. Just imagine what this plant has to go through. They have to change up literally thousands of test benches. This is a huge operation with a monumental amount of money invested. However, it is entirely necessary to ensure the finished products function as desired. It was an absolute eye-opener visiting these two plants in Penang in Malaysia and followed on very neatly from our trips to Israel. Of course, one takeaway is that I got to hold a Ponte Vecchio and pose for a silly photo. That one is going in the album. Perhaps more importantly, as soon as Intel's innovation event has taken place on the 19th of September, we'll be able to talk in detail about their 14th generation Meteor Lake laptop processors, and then we're looking to get our hands on some sample laptops and to experience for the very first time EUV lithography in a consumer product.